And, and, and Dave, I want to thank you for your very kind words and uh, for the leadership that you're showing to the business community in, in the greater Lubbock region. Uh, and I also want to thank uh, the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce uh, for all that you all are doing, uh, as well as all the, the business and community leaders who join with us today, but also who really work every single day in lifting up the entire Lubbock region to being a shining star in the premier state in the United States of America. <laughs> Dave, you, you mentioned leadership in the, in the Capitol, and any governor knows uh, that, that leadership is a process uh, of working very collaboratively uh, with the members in the Capitol. Uh, and I do want to recognize uh, your very own uh, uh, Representative Dustin Burroughs for the leadership that he shows every single day in the Texas House of Representatives. I know that his colleagues, Senator Perry and Representative Frulo, also wanted to be here. They are in Austin, uh, committed to work as we speak. I also want to, to recognize the mayor. Uh, the mayor and I have worked on multiple issues, whether it be COVID-related issues or uh, Arctic blast-related issues, whatever the case may, <laughs> whatever the case, although that's kind of typical for you guys. I mean, that's that's no, nothing new for Lubbock. Like, oh. <laughs> uh, and uh, a, 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 one of the premier education leaders uh, in the United States, and that is the Texas Tech's Chancellor, Ted Mitchell. Thank you for everything that you're doing. And I especially want to thank Rudy Rosales, uh, right here. Uh, I think everybody knows Rudy, uh, as they should. But, but Rudy, I want to thank you uh, and your family. I got to meet uh, Rudy's mom, Maria. I don't know where she is right now. Uh, but uh, Maria, uh, I, I know that she's been working hard getting ready for this, uh, as well as the entire family. So Rudy, thank you. Thank your family, and I want to thank your employees and your staff for hosting this event at Montelongo's Mexican Restaurant. <laughs> Many of you in Lubbock know the story about this restaurant and its legacy, and I know about it, but I was shown pictures uh, of the originator of it, and that is Rudy's grandmother, Petra Montelongo, who opened this restaurant uh, about 50 years ago and built it into what has become a Lubbock treasure. Rudy and his family, they typify the entrepreneurial spirit that does make Texas so exceptional. Because of people like Rudy, Texas does remain the economic engine of the United States of America. Texas has been ranked number one in the United States for business for 16 straight years. Texas has led the nation in exports for 19 straight years. And if Texas were its own country, we would now have the ninth largest economy in the entire world. <laughs> and even with this past year of COVID, Texas has remained the number one state in the United States for economic development. Yesterday, Texas received the Governor's Cup. The Governor's Cup has been received by Texas every year that I have been governor. The award goes to the state that ranks number one in the United States for job creation and for capital investment. And Lubbock, Texas bolstered that success with 12 Governor's Cup projects in 2020. Thank you to Lubbock and the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. You know, that success was achieved despite COVID's impact on business operations. For nearly a half a year, most businesses have been open either 75% or 50%. And during that time, too many Texans have been sidelined from employment opportunities. Too many small business owners have struggled to pay their bills. This must end. It is now time to open Texas 100%. 
Everybody who wants to work should have that opportunity. Every business that wants to be open should be open. Now, let me tell you why now is the right time to do this. Texas is far better positioned now than when I issued my last executive order back in October. And we are in a completely different position than when I issued my first executive order last March. Back then, hardly any Texan knew what PPE was. Now we, ha now we have an abundance of it. Early on, there were no COVID tests. Now we have the ability to do well over 100,000 COVID tests per day. When COVID first ravaged our communities, there were no medicines to treat it. But now we have antibody therapeutic drugs to treat COVID and to keep people out of hospitals. In fact, as, as you all know, I was with the mayor and I was with the chancellor as well as other Lubbock leaders when we formally announced the rolling out of these antibody therapeutic drugs and making them available in large scale process to people in Lubbock as well as people across the entire state of Texas. And we also have multiple medical advancements that help Texans heal and importantly, help keep Texans out of hospitals. And last March, most Texans had no clue about the precautions needed to avoid COVID. Now, Texans have mastered the daily habits to avoid getting COVID. But most importantly now, now in Texas and across the country, we now have vaccines, vaccines to protect Texans from COVID. More than 5.7 million vaccine shots have already been given to Texans. Today, we set a one-day record amount of vaccines administered, administering more than 216,000 in one day alone. And we're now administering about a million vaccine shots a week. By next Wednesday, about 7 million shots will have been given to our fellow Texans. Equally important, we are getting the vaccines to the Texans who need it the most, those who are most likely to be hospitalized or lose their life because of exposure to COVID. By next Wednesday, over half of our seniors will have received a vaccine shot. And by the end of this month, every senior who wants a vaccine shot will be able to get a vaccine shot. <laughs> to help this effort, I have already announced a statewide program called save our seniors. Along with that, I deployed more than 1,100 National Guard to assist local organizations to help our seniors get the shots they need. These efforts should ensure that we keep hospitalizations low in Texas. Importantly, the number of vaccines will continue to increase rapidly with additional supplies of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines as well as the new vaccine that's come out by Johnson & Johnson, which is a one-shot vaccine that Texas began administering today in the state of Texas. In fact, get this, the vaccine supply is increasing so rapidly, Texas will soon expand the categories of people who are able to get them, and some medical professionals say that within a few months, every Texan who wants a vaccine shot will be able to get a vaccine shot. And something else happened this past year. Almost two and a half million Texans were lab confirmed for having recovered from COVID. The CDC says that the real number of recoveries is typically four to five times the number of those who officially tested positive and recovered. Mathematically, what that means is that approximately 10 million Texans, or really more, have recovered from COVID and have the proven ability to beat the disease. Now, all of these advancements and events 
have led to remarkable improvements. Hospitalizations are the lowest that they have been in four months. The number of active COVID cases is the lowest since November and is less than half of what it was just a month ago. That means that far more Texans are recovering from COVID than contracting it. Also, today is the lowest positivity rate we've had in four months. We have been under 10% positivity rate for days now. Today, we're now under 9% positivity rate in the state of Texas. But make no, but make no mistake, and to be clear, COVID has not like suddenly disappeared. COVID still exists in Texas, in the United States, and across the globe. But it is clear from the recoveries, from the vaccinations, from the reduced hospitalizations, and from the safe practices that Texans are using that state mandates are no longer needed. So today, I'm issuing a new executive order that rescinds most of the earlier executive orders. Effective next Wednesday, all businesses of any type are allowed to open 100%. That includes any type of entity in Texas. Also, I am ending the statewide mask mandate. Now, despite these changes, remember this. Removing state mandates does not end personal responsibility or the importance of caring for your family members and caring for your friends and caring for others in your community. Personal vigilance to follow the safe standards is still needed to contain COVID. It's just that now state mandates are no longer needed. To stay safe, Texans should continue, continue following medical advice on preventing COVID just as they do on other medical issues. That is exactly how Texans were able to deal with infectious diseases in the, in the past like H1N1. They followed safe practices and they got medical treatment when it was needed. For a year now, Texans have wrestled with COVID and they have learned best how to conduct their own lives. For example, if businesses want to limit capacity or implement additional safety protocols, they have the right to do so. It is their business and they get to choose to operate their business the way they want to. At this time, however, people and businesses don't need the state telling them how to operate. Now, listen, I know that some local officials are concerned that opening the state 100% could lead to a worsening of COVID in their communities. And my executive order addresses that concern. If COVID hospitalizations in any of the 22 hospital regions in Texas rise above 15% of the hospital bed capacity in that region for seven straight days, then a county judge in that region may use COVID mitigation strategies in their county. However, under no circumstance can a county judge put anybody in jail for not following COVID orders and no penalties can imposed for failing to wear a face mask. Also, if restrictions are imposed at the county level, all entities must be allowed to operate at at least a 50% capacity. More importantly though, we believe that there will not be the threshold met at hospitalizations for county judges to even consider uh, implementing those strategies because Texas will continue working collaboratively with all counties 
to speed the vaccination process. So putting this all together, Texas is doing more than ever to save lives and to reduce the spread of COVID. We must now do more to restore livelihoods and normalcy in the lives of Texans. We will continue to grieve for all who have suffered through this pandemic. And we will always mourn the loss of all lives. We are relieved that Texas now has better tools and more knowledge than ever before to help our fellow Texans combat COVID. Today's announcement does not abandon the safe practices that Texans have mastered over the past year. Instead, it's a reminder that each person has their own role to play in their own personal safety, as well as in the safety of others. It's a reminder that individual safety is managed every day as a matter of personal responsibility rather than by government mandate. Individual responsibility is a corollary to individual freedom. We can have both. Today's announcement ensures that Rudy Rosales and his family just like all businesses and families in Texas have the freedom to determine their own destiny. Just like all Texans, they can tap into their own self-reliance to seize the opportunities that are so unique in Texas and that make our state the most exceptional in America. May God bless you all and may God forever bless the great state of Texas.